In this video today, we're gonna to have a quick look around the garden, just checking out some of the projects that are finally finished, projects I'm in the middle of and that sort of thing. There might be a chicken here and there and yeah, let's see what happens. Stick around and find out, I guess. Thanks. I think I might have to do an update on the blackberries and grapes. So let's go have a look at those and see what they're doing at the moment. Really happy to finally get the walkway finished. It's done now. And what I mean is the netting is completely closed off now. It's completely sealed from top to bottom. Pull tight as much as I can. I've got a little bit more tension that I want to give it just so birds don't get stuck at all. But it's never been an issue before with my bird netting pulling it tight. And this is the legal size that we need here in our state. We've actually got regulations here about bird netting. And it's so cool to get in there and have the grapes on one side and the blackberries on another like I wanted. And um, yes, I did eat quite a few blackberries today. I couldn't help myself. I'm just, yes, finally. And it was really good watching the sparrows today, just spending so much time going backwards and forwards, trying to get into the net and they can't find a way in. The birds have not worked out this netting. So as you can see here, I'm getting blackberries ripening at the moment and I'm having so much fun eating them fresh and trying to collect some and freeze them because I want to make sorbets and pies and jams and stuff like that but yeah as you can see I'm in blackberry heaven this is so worth it and if this is your first time watching this video do go back and have a look at my videos on how I propagated these blackberries for free it's crazy that now I've got so many blackberries and they cost me nothing and really it really was minimal work uh, there's a bird probably trying to get to my blackberries so a lot of my regular viewers would know that i'm so blessed to have an amazing amount of wildlife here at my property as you can see over my shoulder i've got the australian bush behind me and we get so many birds and kangaroos and things like that here. And it's a good thing, but unfortunately the local wildlife can sometimes cause a little bit of trouble. So check this out. You've got to check this out. As you can see here, this is one of my Australian natives that are growing out the front and check this, have a look at this. That is what happens when you have kangaroos fighting in your front yard and a kangaroo falls on top of one of your bushes and turns that into that. It's trashed. So many branches have broken off. So yeah, we're gonna have fun trying to make this guy recover and look like these guys again. Look at that. But you know what? I still love having kangaroos in my front yard. Uh. Speaking of kangaroos in my front yard, I don't know if it was kangaroos or rabbits, but look at that. They chew through <laughs> my Christmas light cable and absolutely ruined my Christmas lights on this tree. Well, it was a good Christmas and I had it working for a couple of days. I guess the wildlife don't like Christmas lights on the trees out here. Olives. Olives are starting to appear on the trees again, which is great. And of course, that means we're going to get a lot of birds hanging out in the trees, which is always a good thing. So you may remember in my last video where I was walking through the orchard and it was so fully grown and overgrown that I was getting slapped in the face by pears and plums and things like that and having a good old laugh about it. But realistically, I can't leave it like that because... I need airflow, good airflow, and I need sunlight to get through and everything. So I got in here today and just went nuts. I've got a bit of cool weather for the next week. So I got in here and just went crazy, cutting a lot of stuff back. And I guess normally when I do a summer prune, I try, try to do it towards the end of summer, but I just let it grow so much that, you know what? I got in here today and I've just chopped off a whole bunch of stuff not too far because I don't want to go damaging the trees, but um, it's looking a bit better. It's a bit more airy in here. 
and oh, losing my hat. It's still got its own microclimate here, even though it's opened up a bit. But yeah, it does feel a lot better being able to walk from one end to the other and not get slapped in the face by pears and plums. Pretty much everything that I've chopped, I've just dropped. And I'm just gonna let that all hit the ground and just organically decay and become organic matter on the ground. And little mama, the chicken in here, she's having a good scratch through and she shreds it and eats some of it. And she leaves her droppings behind. So there's a bit of fertilizer getting in amongst all that. And it's all just getting pushed back into the soil. And then the beauty of having the amount of water that we have here, um, we have water shares because this is old farming property. So every year I have a massive allocation of water that I can actually use and it's more than I can ever possibly use. So when I water the orchard, I just flood it. It's really good. So um, that organic matter and all the water soaking it in, it's just going to all add up to one great mix. And as you can see, my orchard thrives. Um, I don't fertilize it. I used to when I first got the trees, but I've not fertilized this orchard probably, I don't know, maybe in four years, four years. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with it, the way it's going. Finally got myself a weather station. Really happy about that. I can now check out rainfall and wind direction and all the other bits and pieces that are on it that I don't understand. But yeah, finally good to get one set up and Christmas day. We had 180 mil of rain. It absolutely hammered down here and the backyard was just flooded. The chicken, two chicken coops totally flooded out. And lucky I, I had boards in the one over the back here so the girls could actually stay elevated on the ground, walk above the water. But yeah, our Christmas day, there was so much rain. It was ridiculous. Garage flooded, of course, happens again. So yeah, I'll be ringing the council this week and getting onto them and showing them photos and video and all sorts of stuff. But um, yeah, anyway, good to have a weather station and know exactly how much I get flooded out by. I've seen a few foxes hanging around lately out in the forest. So I've got my good old scarecrow and I've popped him on the back fence and we'll have a look and we'll see, see if he actually deters them at all. I'm sort of thinking that the foxes generally, they come out through this clearing here or they come through here and they walk across to here and they'll look into the yard um, from sort of this region over here. So my theory is that maybe at night time or even possibly during the day, they're going to see this kind of human-like figure and it might be just enough to deter them and give them second thoughts about approaching the boundary because as a lot of you would know, my girls... They're just here. <laughs> of course, they disappear when I'm going to show you. But my girls hang out and they like to sit under the trampoline and dust themselves and stuff like that. And yeah, thanks, ladies, for not doing your part. <laughs> but I free range six chickens out here in my yard and they quite often come down to this corner here. And it's a bit of a worry seeing foxes. So yeah. Let's have a look at Scarecrow and see if it does any good. I might do a couple actually and run them along the fence line across the back. Here's the girls slowly making their way into the pen for the night. So yeah, once they go in, I'll close the door up and lock them in and away they go. They're pretty good for the night. Coop needs a bit of a clean out after it got flooded, but you can see the boards down there. That's just enough to keep them above the water if it ever floods in here. Anyway, good night girls. See you in the morning. These are one of the solar lights that I have outside the chicken coop. Hopefully that's gonna show up okay on camera. And yeah, it's got the solar sensor on the day. It charges up during the day. You got your motion sensor there. A ton of LED lights that go either way. And this one, it lights up the area outside the coop if there's predators. I've got this one here. So, there you go. That one there, if something comes to the side of the pen, that one lights up as well. 
Hey girls. And then just outside the door to the chicken coop, I've got another one. And there you go. That one there, if anything's in front of the chicken coop, it lights up the immediate area at night. And because I'm a night owl and I'm up half the night, my doors, my windows and doors, big sliding doors, are just over there at the entertaining area that looks straight out here. So with my peripheral vision, if I'm on the computer or watching TV, I can see these lights come on at night and I know there's either branches blowing in the wind or there's possibly a cat or a predator. Honestly, I've not had a predator out here yet, touch wood, but um, I just like having those lights there to just either alert something or alert me that there could be something. So in this corner of the yard, this messy corner at the moment, I've got a few projects going. So this is a future project here. I won't say too much for now, but we've got this here. And then over here, I've got another project happening and that would be this all along here and over there. Check out those bananas, aren't they cool? Anyway, this is all going to be in a future video, probably a couple of videos actually. So yeah, make sure you stick around and subscribe and see what's going on with all this stuff. Thanks. Well, I'm losing light, so thank you so much for being here and watching this video. If you wouldn't mind checking out this video on the screen right now, I always appreciate that. I will see you hopefully in the next video. You take care and see you next time. Bye.